Good morning from the intersection of Magazine Street and Andrew Higgins Boulevard. We're here in uh, downtown New Orleans this morning to visit the National World War II Museum. It was previously called the D-Day Museum here. Uh, the reason there is such a significant army presence here is due to Higgins Industries. Now, Higgins Industries made the Higgins boat that was used in World War II, and that would have been a flat bottom boat where all your soldiers would come up onto the shore because it would be able to effectively go right onto the right onto the shore and they'd file out of it that way. That boat, that particular boat was used by the US forces, Maltese forces as well as French forces in World War II. So we're going to go inside, it's a pretty big complex so it spans pretty much two blocks as you can see behind me. I think it's 20 between 20 and 25 dollars per person for the ticket and we've actually been recommended to come here all day so we're here it, it, we're not going to do all day it's 11 a.m now we're going to be here till probably about half four five p.m let you guys know what it's like how it is and whether it's worth it as i said everybody here has recommended it to us and they said to spend the whole day here so fingers crossed it should be uh, it should be good just inside through the uh, through the glass here you might be able to see past the reflection is one of the Higgins boats that I mentioned so I'm sure they'll have quite a strong presence internally in the museum as well as a number of other artifacts that we'll we'll be able to see later on all right so we're inside the World War II museum now and as I said before we've got the Higgins boat behind us here that's what I was mentioning previously You've also got a German flak tank. So we've been in the museum itself for about an hour and a half, two hours at the moment. Uh, whilst I was doing my introduction in the entrance area, I was told that we're not allowed to do any filming in the exhibits or anything like that. They actually don't want me filming anywhere on site. So I'm allowed to take pictures and pit them in for you. So um, I'll put a little montage of pictures in so you can see what it's like but the actual area is broken down into four or five buildings throughout the complex and gives you an overview of the war throughout. We're about halfway around the National World War II Museum at the moment. We found a little restaurant that's actually a sit-down restaurant inside the museum called the American Sector. So we've got full menu starters, mains, desserts, burgers. They've got some specials because it's uh, during the Lent season at the moment as well. I'll give you an overview of the menu. And this is the Lent special menu. So what we've ordered is the roast beefy roast beef gravy fries, sorry, and the chicken burrata melt. So the beef gravy fries are effectively like poutine, and the burrata melt is a focaccia sandwich, with grilled chicken, prosciutto, and pesto. So it's quite a good. Quite a good menu, not excessively expensive. We're going to share these two things as well. All right, so we just received our food, and this is the chicken focaccia sandwich. Burracha, I think it was uh, pronounced. It looks pretty good. Chicken looks well seasoned. We've got some chips or crisps there. 
and here's our beef gravy fries. So just give the give the fries a taste. Healthy portion of beef on there. The fries are well cooked and the gravy's gravy's nice and rich. Got some cheese curds on there as well. Decent portions. I think they were seven seven dollars or so. Not bad. Try the focaccia now. So it's got pesto, onions, rocket. Got bacon in there as well and tomatoes. Very nice, very, very flavorful. Chicken's a little bit dry, but you get that in a lot of, a lot of restaurants you find chicken is quite dry, but they cooked it a little bit too long. But the bread is nice, soft. You've got some garlic aioli, pesto aioli, sorry, in there as well. Pretty good. Overall, you know, for, a, for a restaurant in a museum, it's pretty good. Pretty good food. You're expecting you know, cheap hot dogs, cheap burgers, things like that. And this is going far beyond that. So uh, if you're in the if you're in the museum, stop by here. With your ticket, you can actually leave the site mid tour anyway. So you could go out just to McDonald's or a restaurant around the corner if you wanted for a charge not have any additional charges to enter again. But I'd say eat here. Good, good food, not expensive, and you know, you're on site already, so you're saving your time that way. So we're gonna dig in. Final item that we've got now is a key lime pie. Slightly different, it's in a ramekin as opposed to having a crust around it. We've got meringue on the top. This is a, like a... <laughs> Shortcake biscuit, and that's like white chocolate. Be right back yeah. with this, y'all. Thank you. You're welcome. Good try. Quite a quite good consistency there. It's got a thicker consistency with creme brulee, kind of like a mousse, um, but without the air bubbles in it. Key lime is really coming through. It's very punchy. The meringue on the top is light and fluffy. So five dollars. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's good. It is different because of the lack of biscuit base, but pretty good. Once again I can't be filming around the museum, so I'm just gonna be taking pictures and then montages of that throughout. Alright, so we've just finished in the World War II Museum. I had a lot better time than I anticipated actually. Um, I thought being a being a World War II Museum that we've essentially learned all of what I believed we needed to learn back in school, back in primary school, high school, secondary school, whatever you want to call it. I thought that that would be a little bit boring and just you know, glorified, but the layout of it was fantastic. The the sets that they'd set up and the way they'd designed some of the rooms to actually look like, I guess, realistic versions of what it was depicting. That was really cool. They had lots of uh, lots of memorabilia and official artifacts and things like that. And they had a lot of a lot of information that I actually didn't realise. It's definitely somewhere you should go. We were we were recommended it by pretty much everyone, but as I said, we we're a bit sceptical on it. But I think you know, having gone in there now, I think we're very very much believers that that is somewhere that you need to visit when you're in New Orleans. Twenty-eight dollars per person it was. I initially said it was 25 and I misspoke in there, but it was $28 per person plus tax. So it's not cheap. And then there's added extras as well, like theater and films that you can see, which are ranging anywhere from seven to $10 each, I believe. So 
to get the most of the experience obviously you want to you want to add on all those extras we didn't do any of that um, one thing that was a little bit disappointing today and due to the due to the nature of the climate and what's going on around the world currently with the coronavirus a lot of the interactive displays were turned off so we couldn't see many of the videos and things like that we couldn't play around with the displays like you would be able to normally so that was slightly disappointing but obviously we understand the reasons why they've done that <laughs> it was it was good it was very good and very cool experience and yeah definitely somewhere you should go if you're in New Orleans you get a lot of Americanized Americanized history sorry of the war as opposed to just a British perspective on it like we would have or European perspective and the Americans played a huge part in World War II, both fighting on the East Front and helping us in Europe, as well as fighting their own battle um, in Asia against Japan and the onslaught of Japan, the bombing of Pearl Harbor and things like that. So if you get a chance, go here. You won't regret it. It's definitely worth the money. So we're gonna we're gonna head back to the car, get changed, and we're gonna go and uh, do something pretty cool this evening. All right. So we're here on the banks of the Mississippi River now. A pretty cool thing planned for this evening. We are going to take a paddle boat up the Mississippi River for a dinner cruise. The paddle boat there behind us, the Natchez. It's been in operation since 1975, and uh, during. The, Natchez is the name of about four vessels in history and during Katrina this was actually docked up at Baton Rouge which is the state capital of Louisiana so we're gonna we're gonna go on board we're gonna go down the river we've got dinner probably some jazz music things like that going on and it'll be a buffet dinner so we're seating we're having our food at 7.45 I believe six o'clock now so we're gonna board we got an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes or so before we can actually have any food we'll have a little bit of a show probably get some information on the history of the boat itself and some history on louisiana and new orleans and things like that so we're gonna get on board now and uh take you guys with us so we've made it on board the Natchez now. The sun's starting to set a little bit. We've got a view looking right out over the side of the, side of the boat. So we've got a, got a pretty good spot. We boarded at the right time. Just behind us, we've got some entertainment, which I'll put a little video in for you now. And uh, in about about an hour or so, we got our we got our food, we got a buffet. Came in, as we came on board, we saw them carving carving some meat, so it looks like it's a pretty fresh buffet, not the standard frozen rubbish that you'd normally get on buffets. We're probably going to be heading up the river here, go around, turn around, and then potentially come back. But it'll be a pretty cool experience. There's two seatings that you can do. You can do a 6 o'clock seating for the meal, or you can do a 7.45 seating for the meal. We've gone for the 7.45, I'll let you guys know whether that's the right one to go for or not. And uh, I'll let you know how the food is and whether it's worth it or not. It was $174 for the both of us, for the entirety of it. So essentially that's two and a half, three hours or so total experience for us with food. Drinks aren't included, tips aren't included, so we've got to pay for those. You get the opportunity to have your picture taken in front of a green screen as you come on board, and they'll print those off and you can buy those. You've got a couple of bars on board, you've got a gift shop, and it's a pretty iconic boat as well. As I said before, it's been in service since 1975, so you've got some history to it. This band is this band that I showed you has been playing every night for ages, so they know what they're doing. They're very, very rehearsed. 
The music they've been playing is absolutely fantastic. It's been very much traditional jazz, blues, kind of New Orleans style music. Sing about jambalaya, gumbo, that kind of thing. So it's, it, it's pretty cool. The atmosphere on board is fantastic. Everybody's very chill. So the experience so far has been really good. Um, it's nice to just sit and you know, watch the sunset, to be honest. We're going to go uh, have a look in the engine room now. So this is a diagram of the engine room itself. Uh, whilst we were on the move a second ago, we were actually told that these engines are 95 years old and the Natchez itself is from 1975 so it's about to celebrate its 45th anniversary so let's take a walk around yeah And these are steam engines as well. They run on uh, run on diesel, but they are steam engines. So this is what's used to power the paddle at the back of the boat. And this is the pilot of the boat. Sorry, chief engineer. The pilot would be up top and this chap is the chief engineer. the uh, steam engine room itself. If I just take you down the end you can see the paddle in action. So here you see the steam engine powering the paddle. Then at the back there the paddle was used to push the boat forward. So we're in the dining room now. It's been laid out with many tables of two. You've got tables of four down the back there. On each table you've got a glass of water ready and salad. So we also have this sign here that says please wait to be escorted to the buffet. So what they're going to do is bring each couple group up individually to get the food so there's not a mad rush for food. So this is the menu we've got for tonight. We've got gumbo, pork loin, pasta, garlic potatoes, white chocolate bread pudding, sorry. It's a pretty good selection. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the food we've got. So we've got some green beans, almondines, this will be in an almond kind of dressing. We've got some creamed spinach, this is paddle wheel primavera, which is a pasta dish. Her garlic fingerling potatoes, seafood pasta. We've got some beef, nicely cooked in this horseradish and the juices. Catfish. We've got bread and seafood gumbo as it's lent. And then down the end we've got the 
dessert for tonight. Okay, so we've got the catfish, beef, we've got garlic potatoes, we've got the pasta and the green beans. And here we've got the gumbo as well, and this is actually a seafood gumbo. Normally they will have a chicken and sausage gumbo as I showed you on the menu, but because at the moment it's Lent, they've changed it to a seafood gumbo, so we'll give that a try. So for dessert we've got white chocolate bread pudding, and we've got banana foster, as well as vanilla ice cream. Well we finished our meal now, we've just come back up to the top deck. See we've got the bridges behind us. We've got the Riverwalk outlet just here. We're heading back to the dock on Canal Street. We've got the jazz band going. You pretty much know this song. So I'll just show you guys up into the Texas bar. wines and spirits and everything as well as your cocktails there. And we'll just head back down to the back of the ship. So I've got another little bar at the back here. And then that's where the Paddles ago, and you can see him very faintly in the middle of the pain there. So we'll head back, back up to the bow now, and uh, I'll show you the gift shop quickly. This is another one of the paddle boats here, the Creole Queen. It's quite difficult to walk whilst the boat's moving. We've just come off the Natchez, uh, the paddle boat that we were on for jazz cruise and dinner down the Mississippi River. Pretty cool experience overall. Um, as I said earlier, you've got two sit-ins for dinner. You can either sit at 6 p.m. So you literally board the boat, you go and have your dinner, and then you go and watch the jazz and watch the cruise down the river. Or you can have your dinner at 7.45. Now that's what we did, and I think me and Becky both agreed that the 7.45 sit-in was the much better choice in it. Because you... You sailed away during the sunset. You got all the facts from the captain as we were going along the river. He was pointing out buildings and history and just historical topics of each of the buildings that you went past. Um, I think the the overall experience was pretty cool, very good. The, the atmosphere was fantastic and the experience as a whole was really good. I think the dinner was a little bit disappointing in the selection that we had. The, the first time that we went up and we had some of the beef, it was quite dry. But we went up for seconds and it was cooked perfectly then. So I think that was a bit hit and miss. And if you don't like, if you don't like fish dishes, I mean, New Orleans is a fishy place anyway. Louisiana is a fishy kind of cuisine. Uh, but if you don't eat fish, then the food selection on there is a little bit difficult for you. Um, but $175, pretty uh, pretty crucial experience coming to New Orleans. So I think it's a must do. Had a fantastic time and very thankful for Becky for booking this for us both. 
and yeah I had a great evening good food good company good experience what's not to love what's not to love so yeah check it out do the later sitting for dinner the 745 sitting you'll get a better experience you'll sail away at sunset you'll get all the information and then you sit down you have dinner at a pretty reasonable time we just, it's nine o'clock now we've docked and we're you know we're going to be back to the hotel for 10 or you dock basically dead city center so you can go out and enjoy the clubs and whatnot so you don't just have the dinner cruise you've also got the option to do that particular cruise in the evening without the dinner so without either of those sittings that we had and you have the option to just purchase snacks on board you also have the option of doing just a lunchtime cruise where you just be going down in the middle of the day say 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock I don't know the exact time off the top of my head but that means that you'd have the ability to go down and say you've been on a paddle boat you'd still get all the facts and information that you would have got that we had at the beginning of the cruise but you'd also potentially get the opportunity to see alligators and things like that the wildlife because you're not going to have the sunset halfway through so if you want to save a little bit of money if you've got a little bit of time in the day as opposed to the night that could be a good option uh, the dinner doesn't include any drinks it includes tea and coffee but no soft drinks no alcoholic beverages cocktails like that it doesn't include tips so if you want any additional drinks other than water and tea and coffee that's an added extra and you've also got a factor in the tips as well so it does add up if you do if you do the nighttime one so that's our experience today the world war ii museum paddleboat cruise down the river if you've enjoyed it if you've had a good time with us hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon to be notified when we post a new video we'll see you on the other side